Cast iron pans, the most versatile cookware on the planet, and when cared for properly, they can be passed down from generation to generation with future generations to follow. Now when it comes to seasoning cast iron, you will hear several different opinions on how to go about the process. One person will say to use animal fat, another person says to use Crisco, olive oil, vegetable oil, you name it, different oven settings, uh, different procedures. That ought to tell you that this is not rocket science, okay? There's really no one set method to achieve this process. It's very, very simple. What you want to do is you want to get that iron pan to absorb that oil and build up several coats of that, and you end up with a carbonized oil uh, coating, which will keep the food from sticking and stop your pan from rusting. Okay, we're going to take a look at a few different pans here. Now, this one here, this pan here, it's got a nice seasoning to it. Uh, it's been well cared for. You can tell the seasoning is nice and even. It's a nice even black throughout. This one also got a nice seasoning to it. Some spots where the seasoning is worn off a little bit here, but still in very nice shape. This one here, this one's obviously been scrubbed too much. It's got some scratches in it. Uh, someone probably used a very uh, tough abrasive on it. Uh, it's still got some good seasoning to the pan, but you can see there's some light patches and dark patches here. There's some scratches in the finish. Someone used an abrasive or a, a wire brush on this one here. Um, certainly didn't ruin the pan, but it could use a little bit of TLC. So we'll use this one as a good example and we'll get a nice seasoning uh, redone on this one here. This little pan here, pretty decent shape. That could use a little bit of seasoning as well. This one, beautiful seasoning to it. Nice and even all the way throughout. No light and dark patches to it. Very good pan right here. Now we'll use these two here for the example for today. Uh, they're good old pans. We'll just give them a little bit of TLC, bring that seasoning back to life. Now I am simply just going to give these a little bit of oil. Gonna work that oil in on the outside as well. Just a very light coating. You can do the handle if you want. And work that oil into the pores. I don't want any oil puddling up. A lot of folks try to rush the process. It seems that's just the nature of our society nowadays. Um, you don't want to go ahead and put a thick coating on there. I have seen some cast iron that has been seasoned with a heavy coating. You end up with puddles. Uh, I don't like to have those thick puddles. It's almost like a wax coating. I don't want my pans like that. You put too much on there and you hang it upside down, you sometimes get these drips that solidify. And if you have thick concentrations of oil, it can go rancid on you. And I don't want anything like that transferring to my food. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and stick those in the oven now. And uh, I'm going to leave it in the oven for about an hour or so. what was my opinion on the uh, pre-seasoned cast iron that you can buy in the stores and catalogs. Well, I'm a little reluctant to give my opinion on that because my opinion isn't good. <laughs> um, 
all I'm just going to speak from my experience with the stuff. Now, a few years ago, I found some attractor supply that was discounted way down. Really good deal, so I bought a bunch of it. When I was frying a steak at the cabin, I noticed that some of the seasoning was coming off the pan and onto my steak. Well, it was a little bit unsettling to me. Uh, and the reason is because the food industry allows so many chemicals to be put into our food nowadays. How lenient are they with what gets put on the cookware? Um, I don't know the answer to that. Seeing stuff come off the pan onto my food was just a little unsettling. Uh, I sold all that cast iron. Okay, so to me, trying to beat the process and uh, buying uh, factory seasoned cast iron is much like uh, the difference between uh, having something homemade as opposed to some boxed up store bought entree. You just can't beat homemade. Uh, taking something that was slow roasted in my wood fired oven will blow the doors right off of anything anybody can cook in a microwave. You know, trying to rush the process with it just really isn't for me. Uh, if you want to give the pre season stuff a, a try, go right ahead. Uh, but as far as my opinion, and again, it's just my opinion, you can't beat cast iron that has been well cared for. Get an old uh, vintage piece of iron like this that's been well cared for. It's got a good seasoning. Uh, it, it makes the food just taste wonderful. I'm gonna, you're gonna see me shortly fill this up with chicken and potatoes and stuff like that. And I'm gonna put this right in the uh, oven for tonight. Uh, the cast iron, it's just all purpose, all purpose, you know. This one, you can, you can deep fry chicken. You can use it as a roasting pan. Use them as a fry pan. Use them, you put them right on the fire. Put them on the grill. Put them in the oven. You go to Applebee's and they're going to serve you on the Bourbon Street steak. It's going to be on a little cast iron skillet, right? So now it's even a serving tray. It's just awesome stuff. And it just, it's, it's good old-fashioned stuff that looks great hanging in the kitchen. So I really recommend it. You know, I really recommend getting some cast iron, learning how to care for it, and you'll be very, very happy you did. Let's go over to the oven here and see how these pans are doing. Yeah, see? Now that right there, see, that is spotty. That's showing that this pan already had a really nice season to it, and it wasn't accepting the oil as much as one that doesn't have a season to it. And this big one. Same deal. Now I'm going to take these over to the kitchen and wipe them out. I don't want to leave any puddling in the pan whatsoever. Now all I'm doing here is I'm just going to wipe down the pans with a dry paper towel. I'm wiping off any excess oil. Excess oil serves no purpose. If you have a lot of excess, your pan's going to become sticky. I don't want that. I don't want anything sticky, any kind of residue coming off onto my food. Okay, so again, any excess oil serves absolutely no purpose, so remove it. These pans are good to go. Now all I use to season my pans is simply olive oil. Olive oil is what I cook with, so that's what I use. I use what's on hand. I can't say that olive oil is any better than any other oil. It's just what I use. It's what I've been using on my fry pans for years and years and years. And my pans are in good shape, so I'm going to continue the process. Now, when you're seasoning your pans, our generation now seems to want to rush into everything. Okay? Uh, they kind of think that more is better and that goes with everything, and it does not. It certainly doesn't go with uh, seasoning cast iron. You don't want to put a big heavy coat of oil on your pans. Too many times I have seen people pull a cast iron pan out of the cabinet and it'll have like uh, solidified droplets in the pan or puddles that have solidified or the pans are sticky. It looks like they were dipped in polyurethane. Okay, that's not the way to go about it, folks. If you have 
puddles of solidified oil in your pan. That can become rancid. You're going to transfer that to your food. It's not going to serve the process. You don't want to clog all of these pores like that. You want to do it in simple, very, very light coatings of oil. will do the job just nicely, and there will be no puddles. There will be nothing to transfer over to your food. <laughs> Now here in this pan, there's a little bit of food that's stuck to it. All I do with that, I'm going to put in a little bit of water. No soap at all. I'm working out here on the gas just because the lighting is better. Now all I'm going to do is let that pan come to a boil for just a few minutes. Anything that's stuck to that pan should come right to the surface. And then I should be able to clean out that pan just with a dish rag or a paper towel. Now this process here, some folks will argue it. Now if I was using hot soapy water, that would be a different story. Now that would be lifting the oils out of the iron. But I'm not lifting the oils out of the iron here. Because what I'm doing here is just stirring up the oils that were left over from this food that I cooked this morning. Now that should be long enough. Now I'll take that to the sink and wipe that out. Now you want to make sure you have a, a pot holder there, and I'm using just a damp rag. There's no soap again. I'm not using soap here. And everything is lifted off of that pan. Beautiful. I'll give it a little bit of swish around the water. I'm going to wipe it up, and we'll be good to go. Now, there's no reason in the world to be in here scraping away with a spatula or uh, scratching away at the pan with some steel wool trying to remove something that might be stuck from your pan. Simply just put in a little bit of water, bring it to a boil, well, three, four, five minutes, everything will come to the surface, and it should come right off with just, um, a, just a towel, a dish rag, or if you have to, just some sort of a plastic scrubby. I don't go at my pans with any kind of steel wool or anything like that. It's not necessary whatsoever. Okay, I'm just wiping out any excess water from that pan. And I'm going to put this on a burner just to heat up for a little bit and reapply some oil. Now I'm just doing a medium heat here. All I want to do is just get those pores of the iron to open up a little bit. And I'm just going to wipe in just a very, very light coating of oil. And then that'll be ready to go back in the cabinet. Just a very light coating of oil. And I'm going to wipe any excess off. Now, as you can see here, boiling that pan did not affect the seasoning whatsoever. And it did a great job of lifting any stuck food items from that pan. That right there, folks, is a beautiful thing. That's a textbook seasoning right there on this pan. There's no light and dark patches whatsoever. It's a nice, even coat throughout. This is an old Griswold pan. This is just a dandy here. Um, so that pan will be in service for many, many years to come. As you can see, caring for cast iron is really an effortless process. There's just a few precautions you want to take to make sure that you maintain the seasoning of your ironware. Now, I've seen on several occasions where folks will recommend using a coarse salt as an abrasive to clean your fry pans. I don't agree with that. Salt and iron don't mix. I don't want salt on my vehicle, so I will certainly never add anything to my cookware that will promote rust. You should never have to use any abrasives whatsoever to clean your pans. Just simply boil a little bit of water in the pans like I displayed in the cleaning process of this video. Never allow your pans to soak in a sink full of hot soapy water or clean them in a dishwasher or allow them to air dry after the cleaning process. Always towel dry the pans and then put them on a low heat just to allow the rest of the moisture to evaporate from your fry pans. Add a very light coating of oil and always wipe away the excess for your best results. Well, all this talk about cooking with cast iron is getting me hungry, so I decided I'm going to go ahead and throw a chicken right in there. Wood burning oven's nice and hot, so and bake that up for supper. Well, I hope. 
you enjoyed this tutorial on caring for cast iron, please view part two where you'll see me take an old rusted junky fry pan that somebody threw away and do a full restoration with very minimal effort. Well, thanks for watching. All the best, and God bless.